Um, we have a function. That function is sine of x. We'd like to understand how to graph this thing. So we're not gonna cheat and just stick it into Desmos. What the homework, the assignment tells you to do is to fill out a table and try to draw it. I highly suggest if you can print out the assignment this week because it makes things a lot easier. I understand if some of you don't have a printer, it makes it really, really hard, but um, typing in your answers is really bad for this week's assignment because uh, you can't graph. It's really hard to graph this thing without using technology. And if you don't have, you don't want to use Desmos or something, it's better to just print the thing out or do it in notebook paper. Okay. Anyway, so we're going to fill out a table here, but instead of our normal one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, for X, we're going to plug in angles and not just any angles. We're going to plug in our special types of angles in measurements. We're going to do this in radians. That's from last week's lesson. And with, with, with our first radian, we're going to start with the zero, with, with zero as our first radian. Again, radians is another way of measuring angles instead of degrees. Just like measuring how, someone, how tall is someone, you can measure using feet or centimeters. So like in angles, there's radians. So we're going to start with zero radians. And I'm going to put, whew, here we go, pi over 4, pi, oh wait, no, 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 pi over 6 first, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2. And we'll stop there for now. Normally, radians are measured with pies in it like that. Essentially, it means one-sixth of a pie, one-fourth of a pie, one-third of a pie, and pi over two. Actually, yeah, we'll stop right there. Now, if you notice what it says up there, it says, get, got a scientific calculator. We're going to set it to radian mode or rad mode. And we're literally going to type in sine of zero, but we want to make sure we're in radian mode. So if you are following along, I'm just literally going to type in sine of zero, and you should get zero. Now, on your scientific calculator, there is a pi button, and you're literally going to write sine pi divided by six, and you get, hey, that's not too bad, 0.5. I'm literally going to type in sine of pi. If you want to see what that looks like, uh, I have a graphing calculator though, so it might, I'm kind of cheating here so because it's easier to type. Oh, uh, okay. Let's take away this background. Everyone's going to see my living room. I think I showed my living room already. Uh, choose virtual background. None. Okay. That's what it looks like. Sine pi, come on, sine of pi over four. And you get a decimal, 0 0.707. I'm just going to round that. 0.71. This sure is taking long. But trust me, at the end of the lesson, we're not going to need to do this every time. This is just for us to really understand what we're doing here. Also, you have to do this in your homework anyway, so I'm kind of doing half of it for you. And sine of pi over two. Anyone actually plug that in yet? Plug that in yet? You get something nice. One, thanks. Okay, so for now, let's graph this thing. On your homework, here's what it looks like. It's kind of a weird looking X, Y axis. You know, I'd be wondering, Mr. Viernes, why'd you make the right side longer like that? That looks so weird. Well, here's why. Why is X radians? 
because x could be x is going to be is going to be angles and we decided to scale our axes using radians just for the context of the problem just like x could be feet depending on what function you're using for sine and cosine we're measuring angles so we choose to use radians because also radians allows us to see better what this thing looks like Um, also, radians, it's easier to graph 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, because the equivalent degrees would be 0, 30 degrees, 45 degrees. And I don't want to scale that with my axes using those degrees instead, because they'll get higher and higher and higher. Easier to do it by pi's in fractions. So here's going to be 0. Now, it's kind of weird how the heck, where would pi over 6 or pi over 4 be? Well, let's call this pi over 2. Actually, that's too, that's too far. Let's call this pi over 2. Okay. And we have to be careful, too, how we scale the y-axis as well. Notice that this only goes up to one. Well, Mr. Buren is, you need to keep going. Okay, let's keep going. For pi, after pi over two, I'm going to put in two pi over three because I want to. Just, we're going one third and then two thirds. Let's just see what that is. Sine of two pi over three. Again, you wouldn't be required to make this table. We're just trying to see what this looks like. And take a look. You get 0.86. You can imagine what the next one's going to be. I'm going to tell you this is 3 pi over 4. Does anyone have a logical guess based upon what the values are before this, what's 3 pi over 4 going to be without typing it in? So 0 0.5, 0 0.71, 0 0.861, then 0.86. What's this one? 0.71. And the next one would be 5 pi over 6. This is going to be, you guessed it, 0 0.5. And then the last one here, pi. I'm picking these for you, though. I wouldn't make you pick those. So this would be 1 again. So this would be pi. So we have to be very careful graphing this. I'm going to call this all the way up here 1. Why? Because I look at this and go, look at my y's. They only go up to 1, and it goes down again. So I don't need to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm going to scale it so it goes up 1. I'm also going to tell you, hey, this goes down to negative 1. So let's try to graph these points. I'm not going to use this orange. Let's use blue. What? Wait, isn't pi 0? I'm so sorry. You are totally right. Thanks. So let's graph some of these points. 0, 0. Now, if it's pi over 6, pi over 6 is kind of like right here, and it's 0.5. Pi over 4 is kind of halfway between 0 and pi over 2, and that's 0.71. Pi over 3 is even closer, and then pi over 2 is 1. Not a, not a, okay, the, you think it keeps going? What does it do now? According to our table, what does it do now? It's going to go back down. And we know pi is 1. And I'm not even going to bother making more points. I'm just going to go like this. Well, that's fun. So, Mr. Vierners, do you think, does it go back up again? It's a good guess. Does it do this again? It could. 
let's see. We're going to make a table. We're going to continue the table. After pi, I want us to put 7 pi over 6, then 5 pi over 4, then uh, one might not get it. Uh, 3 pi, 4 pi over 3, and then finally 3 pi over 2. Again, I'm not going to make you make this table, but these are just the values that would be after pi. Here, if I plug this in, you get, ooh, who's going to get it first? What is the sign of 7 pi over 6? Negative 0.5. Isabel, can you guess what the next one is going to be without plugging it in? I'm going to be so happy if you can guess it. Negative 0.71. Negative point. Eight, six, and then finally, negative one. It's actually dipping down now. So if I go back to my blue, it's dipping down now to negative one. And what happens here, we're going to save some time because I only got 30 minutes left. Mr. Grannis, you have 30 minutes left? Yes, there's more, way more than this. This is the graph of sine, technically. This is actually one, what we call cycle. Because if we keep going infinitely to the right, it actually repeats again now. So let's take a look at this more closely because this is not instinctual, which we discovered in my other class that that's actually a real word. If you take a look, it starts here and it goes through one entire cycle in two pi. If you remember from last week, a circle completes its degree, its, its ro full rotation in 360 degrees. 360 degrees is also known as 2 pi. So this thing completes one cycle in 2 pi radians. And then it repeats itself. You're basically going around the circle again. This is where these values come from. And then we graph these as points on the xy plane, and it keeps going and going infinitely. But what we're interested in, is this a sine wave? This is a sine wave, very good. What we're interested in is just one cycle for now. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of parts of this that you don't know about. There is something called the amplitude. Um, In the most layman terms, it's how far it stretches up and down. There is something called a midline. So it's so much easier to teach this in person. So what you think about the midline is if anyone knows what a guitar string is, just imagine a guitar, an invisible guitar string, and then you Oh, wait, we have a guitar here. Ha! 
So if I hit a guitar and I pull on the string, the, the string is doing this, but it eventually goes back to that, to that, to that guitar string itself. So what's happened, just imagine these waves as the way, as the way the guitar string is going. What the midline is that it's, it represents that invisible guitar string. Invisible guitar string of which the, the sine waves or the waves revolve around like so. There's one other word here called the period. How long is one uh, cycle? Okay, it's a lot of stuff. <laughs> okay. Now, you won't have to make a graph or a table every time. What I'm going to show you is this is actually a parent graph that you would have to know next year. Can I go to the next slide? Any objections? Do you play guitar, Mr. V? Hell yeah. I call that sign. <laughs> okay. Just like all these parent graphs, you guys know how to graph these without making a table, whatnot. You, you, don't, you don't need to make a table. If I ask you to graph, <laughs> I'm hoping if I ask you to graph this, everybody in this, in, this, in this chat and anybody watching shouldn't be able to graph that. You don't need to go to Desmos. You don't need to go to um, don't make, need to make a table. You just know, hey, I know the parent of that looks like this and it's been shifted down three and it does this. Boom. I'm here to tell you that sign is also a parent graph. And this is what it looks like. This is one cycle. If I know the shape and then it goes up one, it goes down negative one. Okay, let me draw that better. Essentially, here's what sine looks like. F of x equals sine of x. What it does is it goes up and down to 1 and negative 1. It starts here. It goes up and then down. Well, I, don't, I could do that better. This is why I strongly encourage not using, uh, trying to do this assignment by printing out the document or doing it on notebook paper because these are much easier to do by hand. And also what we want to know is it, it, it completes from here to here to two pi, two pi's in radians. So the question is, what happens if I give you this? No, let's, let's, let's start off easy. Sine of x plus two. Okay. All I need to know is what this looks like because it'll help me exactly decide what sine of x plus 2 looks like. As you know, as what plus 2 always does to anything, Manny, it moves the whole thing up. But we need to be very careful what that actually means. So the way I graph this is start with something called the midline. The midline is what dictates the entire thing. Where's the invisible guitar string? It's a line. My question is, where is it? Where is the invisible guitar string? Um, here's a hint. 
Where is this invisible guitar string? What's the midline here? Yes, so what's the, the midline over here is zero because it's this invisible guitar string. Now, since we're moving the whole thing up two, it's now up here. Um, this is now two. This is now one. This is now zero. This is now three. I should scale this. Let me redo this. I'm sorry. You don't have to redo it, but I'm going to redo it so it looks better. So I'm going to scale it a lot like this. Here's one. Oh, gosh. Okay, here's one. Here's two. And now the guitar string's up here. So the question is, what else is changing? For instance, what is the amplitude? It's actually still one. The amplitude is still one. And I'm going to tell you later how to figure out what the amplitude is. The amplitude, again, from the previous slide is how far does it go up? How far does it go down? In this case here, the amplitude here is one. It goes up one and down one. OK, if I'm going to start here now, because I've been shifted up to, what do I go up to? If I go up, where am I stopping? Where am I stopping? Three. Okay, Jonathan, what do I go down? What am I, when I go down, I'm going to go all the way down to where? One. And then stop and go back up. It's the same graph, but the whole thing has been shifted up. It got, went up one, down one. It went up to three and down to one. But the amplitude is still measured to be one because it's up one unit, down one unit. And what would we require is two cycles. Well, I would just do the whole thing again. Ooh, bonus question. If this is two pi, where does the second cycle end? Four pi, baby. That is what sine of x plus two looks like. I didn't have to make a table, that complicated decimal table. That was just to see what this thing looks like. Once we know what the parent looks like, which is f of x equals sine of x, I can graph almost all the ones you would see in this class. OK, so here is f of x equals sine of x parentheses. Ooh, this one's going to be let's, let's not go that hard yet. Um, let's go minus three sine of x. Okay. Again, first thing I start off with is where is my invisible guitar string? Because that will dictate where is this waving. Man, this is so much easier with a guitar. No, it's not. This is so much easier with a guitar. <laughs> where is the invisible guitar string now? Ooh, the, you're right about the amplitude. The amplitude is three. Zero, the midline is zero here. It's not shifted up or down. However, 
what the three is doing, well, what would a three do to x squared? It stretches it. So the three here also stretches it. So it's not only gonna go, it's not gonna go up to one anymore. It's gonna go, our invisible guitar string is at zero. And from here, it goes up to three and down to negative three. The three itself tells us it's stretching up and then stretching down and then stretching up three, then down three, up three, then down three. Okay. However, there is one last thing that we have to account for. It's not just three, it's negative three. What do negatives do to any graphs? I'm going quick here, I'm sorry. It goes down first. Flip, yes and yes. Manny, I don't know which Manny you are, but you are on fire. It's gonna go down first, starting here. No, we're not gonna use green, let's use blue. Down and then up. It flips it. This thing got flipped. And that's just one cycle. It's gonna keep going, but just to see it, this is what it looks like. And this is still two pi. Okay. Next slide, I have 16 minutes to teach 25 minutes worth of material. And I have another meeting after this. Stupid guitars is distracting me. Would it be compressed? Um, compressed wouldn't be the word I would use. It would be stretched. Because I think of compressed as, as getting smaller. I don't, I don't think so. So graphing form for sine. Well, graphing form for, let's remember the one for a parabola is y is equal to a parentheses x minus h squared plus k. Believe it or not, sine also has a graphing form. I'd normally wait a few minutes to see if someone could figure it out, but we're running out of time. This is a sine parentheses x minus h. Actually, yeah, for this class, there's actually a fourth, a fifth letter, but we're not doing it in this class. Next year, not this class. For now, A, sine, parentheses, X minus H plus K. There is a fifth letter, but I'm not gonna, we're not gonna go over that this year. Now, A represents something every time. Someone probably knows. Wouldn't it be compressed, but wait, wouldn't a number above one make it compressed? That's actually a number of between zero and one would make it compress like smaller. A represents something, there's a name for it. Starts with the letter A. <laughs> okay, we're running out of time. This is the amplitude. A represents our amplitude every time. How far it goes up, how far it goes down. Um, Okay, screw it. We're gonna run out of time for the colors. We're not gonna go, we're, there's no B. We're gonna do A. It does represent a vertical shift, but more importantly, it actually represents something even more vital. The midline. H, as you guessed it, it also represents a horizontal shift. And it works the same way too. It works the opposite as it should. Okay, so looking at an example here, another example, if I have f of x equals two sine x minus pi plus one. This is a complicated one for, for math three. Good, good, good gracious. Let's write better. Minus pi plus one. Okay. 
just I'm just gonna treat it like a parabola, sort of. If this was a parabola, it'd be two x minus two squared plus one. I'm using two instead of pi because remember our axes are scaled with pi's with radians. So first thing I'm I'm, I'm gonna identify everything. Here's the amplitude. This is my horizontal shift. And this is my midline. And I'm gonna go in this order. I'm gonna start with one, then the horizontal shift, and then the amplitude in that order. So midline is at one. I'm gonna make this bigger. It also has been shifted to the right pi. So there normally would be a dot right here, but we're now going to the right pi. I'm going to call this pi. So there's my first dot. Now, the amplitude. If this is one, how high are we going? Where am I stopping? What number am I stopping at? As my pencil's going up, what number am I stopping at? Since the amplitude is three, oh crap, this is two, sorry, this is two. If the amplitude is three, how high are we going? I'm running out of time, five, this is five. And it goes down all the way to zero and then back up. Notice I'm labeling the amplitude because it's going up three Oh crap, I'm miscalculated two. It should be negative one, right? Crap. Why negative one? Well, again, we're going up three from two and down three to negative one. Good, that looks bad. I mean, goodness gracious, it looks bad. And that is the graph of two sine x minus pi plus one. Um, there's something else called the period, which I didn't really have a chance to talk about too much, but period. Is two pi. It's how long it takes for it to complete a cycle. In other words, from here to here is two pi, but since we're starting at pi, this would be 3 pi instead. Because again, the period is still 2 pi. Um, that is a complicated one. Um, I don't even think that your assignment has anything more complicated than that. Ha doesn't have anything as complicated as that. Because you got horizontal shift, you got vertical line, you got vertical shifts, and you got amplitudes. I don't even think the assignment go even goes that far. But that's, what, that's a taste of next year. So I got 10 minutes left. There is also cosine. We're not gonna make a table because your homework is already gonna make you do that. I'm just gonna show you what that parent graph looks like real quick. Because it looks a little different. Looks very almost similar, but different. So our two new parents, the first parent was sine of x. And what sine of x does, it goes up and then down. That's considered one cycle for sine. One, negative one. Here is the parent for cosine. It's still going to go one and negative one, but one cycle of cosine looks like this. It actually starts at the amplitude up here and it goes down, then back up. And that is one cycle. <sighs> From here to here, it's still 0 to 2 pi. From here to here, this is 0 to 2 pi. That represents 360 degrees. Basically, what cosine does, it starts up here, it goes dips down, and comes back up. The sine, it starts at the midline. 
I usually like to write start here. Here, it starts up here. So how do we graph something like this? Well, it's the same process. We just want to know what one cycle looks like. For instance, f of x equals, let's go, same thing as the last one, 3 cosine, or the one earlier. Uh, Same procedure. First off, we need to graph the midline. And are there any shifts or vertical or horizontal? And then finally, the amplitude and then graph it. Midline is zero. Shifts. There's actually none here. And finally, the amplitude is three. I'm so sorry that I'm going too fast. I might include another lesson into the, in addition to this lesson video um, from like Conic Anime or something or someone better. <laughs> um, so midline's done. Shifts are done. Amplitude. So again, with cosine, normally we would begin at the origin purple. However, this is cosine. It starts, where does it start? Where does it start? At three, because the amplitude is three. It's going to start up here and go down to where? I'm looking at the parent. This goes down to negative one. I'm going to go down to negative three and then go back up to three. And that is my graph of three cosine of x. And it keeps going. If we wanted to, to keep going, we could, but we are interested in just one cycle, one cycle. Um, again, period, I'll write this down again. How long is one cycle? Negative cosine of x plus 2. Let's go back to red. Midline is y equals 2, or just 2. Amplitude, no. Um, yeah. Shift. It went up to amplitude. You could technically put negative one, but it is neg it is one, but it's also negative one. And that's basically it. There is no vertical shift. There's no horizontal shift. I'm so sorry that I'm going too quick here. Normally we'd have a lot a better pacing in a in in a in an actual classroom because I'd have a whole 95 minutes to do this. I give plenty of time for students to tackle each one and then the normal of, hey, if you're done, you should help someone else that's struggling, and then everyone gets to help each other, and blah, 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 then pandemic time is then we can't do that anymore. <laughs> um, okay, midline is all the way up here. If anything, this is teaching students how to be independent, more independent, because if you intend to go to college, a lot of learning is independent <laughs> because you're in a classroom of 300 students and you get forgotten in, in the crowds. Um, who knows if that'll still happen in the future, but um, some, a lot of your learning has to become independent. So anyway, where am I starting? This is actually a good question to see how good you are initially. 
not everyone's gonna get this. I'm curious, where is my first dot going to be? In purple again. Is it, I'll give you options. Is it one, two, or three? Where is that first dot going to be? Someone said two, someone said three, someone said one, two, three, or one. It's really a third chance. Anybody else could participate? Three. Three. The answer is one. Woohoo! Why the holy matrimony is it one and not three? That's why the thing is flipped. So instead of starting up there, it now starts all the way down there. Remember, Cosine starts at its amplitude. However, if I flip the whole thing, it now will start at the bottom of the amplitude. It's now going to start here. And then it's gonna go all the way up to three and down back to one. Because from the amp, if the midline is at two, but the amplitude is one, negative one, we're gonna start down here one unit away. If this was four, I would start all the way down at negative two because it's been stretched all the way up and it would go all the way back down. Mind blown, ha <laughs> ha, I know. And we can of course keep drawing cycles. This is still two pi. Woo! A little bittersweet, but that was the final lesson. Now, in terms of content, there'll still be class next week. I'll show you how to, that's where I'll show you how to use the Desmos, but any questions about anything lesson-wise, whatnot. It's gonna take a while, work through this assignment, take your time with it. Um, the lesson, the basically the assignment will go through how to do this all over again for those people that didn't go here. Seasons change and cold. Be the flame. Uh, she, well, she, he, eh. run away, run, run. I dare you to do. Am I on Snapchat? I'm not on Snapchat, right? <laughs> hey, Snapchat. get the lyrics. Where's the lyrics? Circles lyrics. Wait, is this language appropriate? We couldn't turn it around till we were upside down. Does that how he sings it, right? I'll be the beckon No, I ain't too proud I couldn't be there Even when I tried You don't believe it do this every time seasons change and our love went cold feed the flame cause we can't let it go run away but we're running in circles run away run away tell you to do something 
I'm waiting on you again, so I don't take the blame. Run away, but we're running in circles. Run away, run away. That's the end of the lesson.